A permit to work is vital to make your job safe. Ignoring it can be extremely dangerous and can lead to death and serious injury. This is the BP Cupiagua field in Colombia in South America. Pablo Guerrero, Linares Moreno and Oscar Gomez were helping to build a roadway to a new flow line connecting the well pad to the Cupiagua central processing facility. High voltage cables passed over the track at a height of about eight meters. And the three of them had been asked to erect a goalpost sign over the road in front of the cables to warn construction traffic of the danger. Their permit had been signed by the engineer, but he hadn't visited the site. Instead, the engineer relied on the advice of a supervisor who assessed all risks as low. The supervisor left before the job started, handing over to Pablo. But there was a disagreement between them about where the sign should be positioned. In the end, Pablo insisted it was placed half a meter in front of the cables. It was a fatal decision. Linares fetched the first 10 meter long upright, while Oscar and Pablo dug a hole about a meter deep to put it in. Dale con más fuerza. It had touched the high voltage cable and he was unable to move until Oscar ran at him and pushed him away, freeing his grip on the pole. Pablo fell to the ground. He died from the electric shock. Permits can only provide safety if they're completed correctly, based on a good local assessment of the risks and agreement on the measures needed to control them. The Golden Rule says you must have a permit to work whenever abnormal or high-risk work is to be carried out, or where specific circumstances require protection above that which normal working conditions provide. And specifically, a permit must exist before you start work which involves confined space entry or working on energy systems. You must have a permit before starting work involving ground disturbance where buried hazards may exist. And hot work in potentially explosive environments. The permit must define the scope of the work. It must identify hazards and assess risk and it must establish control measures to eliminate or mitigate those hazards. The permit must link the work to other associated work permits or simultaneous operations. It must be authorized by the responsible person. And then everyone involved in the work must have the contents of the permit communicated to them. When the job is over, the permit must ensure adequate control over the return to normal operations. The permit provides written confirmation that a risk assessment of the specific conditions affecting the work has been carried out. And that appropriate control measures to protect personnel and equipment from each of the hazards have been provided. The permit is a formal agreement between you and the permit authority or responsible person that the risks and the controls to mitigate those risks are understood and will be fully implemented. Sign the permit only when you're happy that you understand all the requirements. The permit to work system at Cupiagua was revised and strengthened and training was carried out to make sure it was fully understood. Managers have been encouraged to review the system in operation during their regular ASA tours. 
The Golden Rule helps everyone to understand how important the controls specified in a permit are for their own safety. Don't start work if you don't understand, or if you think that the job is still unsafe. If it's unsafe, stop work.